So welcome to the information session for the French Immersion School in trois um, We're happy to have you with us, uh, either in person or watching this recording. Um, so the purpose of this information session is to focus on our uh, upcoming adult weeks in August, which are still open for registration. So we'll go over some of that information about the school, about the program, um, and uh, we'll have time for questions at the end. So my name is Sandra Bardwell. I'm the program specialist for French Immersion and Language Courses at Western Continuing Studies. And I'm joined by my colleague, uh, Leila Zaytoun, who's the program assistant for French Immersion and Languages. So um, Leila will be reviewing the chat room. If you have any questions, you can type them in there, uh, or we will have time at the end for questions as well. So let's get started. Um, so, uh, let me see here. Oop. There we go. So, the French Immersion School in trois um, it's been around for almost 90 years. We have a long standing history and partnership with the town. Um, 90 years ago, uh, the president of Western was looking for a place where students could go to uh, learn French uh, or improve their French skills. Um, initially, it was just for kind of the French cohort at Western and it's grown since then. Um, but when they were searching, they were looking for a small town in Quebec um, and they chose trois because of the, the small uh, size of the town and the hospitality and friendliness of the community and the true kind of francophone um, environment, which still is today, it's still almost 100% francophone in trois So it's a really wonderful place for students to go to experience French every day, every minute of the day, whether you're in class, whether you're outside of class, everywhere you go, you'll hear and be um, exposed to the French language and culture. Um, so trois uh, the town, is located about two hours east uh, of Quebec City, so towards the east coast on the south side of the river. So you get a nice blend of kind of um, east coast, maritime, salt water. It's about where the, the St. Lawrence River turns from a, um, you know, uh, salt water to, to uh, not. So it's a really nice um, environment to, to be, aside from the French uh, language piece and the culture piece, just the environment and the nature um, in that area is really lovely to experience. So that's just an idea of the area itself. Of course, um, when you participate in trois one of the elements, uh, one of the main elements is the classroom experience. So uh, every morning students are in class. Um, you see in the picture here, you know, the, the desk in kind of a rounded circle. Um, it's definitely the focus is on communication, speaking with each other, making it easy to speak with a partner or in groups or as the whole class. Um, so that's very, very common in trois is it's not, you know, teacher to student. It's really the whole classroom engaging with each other, um, no matter the level. So our classes, um, uh, we place students based on their um, their abilities in French. So we use your placement test score or any information you've given us about previous French studies to place you in a group um, of, of similar uh, individuals who have a similar level. Um, and that ensures that, you know, the content of the course is relevant to you and, and not too easy or not too difficult. Of course, the placements aren't set in stone. So if after day one, you think, oh, this is a bit too easy or a bit too hard, we can always move you um, to another group uh, as needed. So um, so aside from the, the classroom space itself, we, um, we have access to our own kind of wing in the local high school. That's where all of our programming is held. So in our wing of the school, we have 15 classrooms. Students also have access to a computer lab, the auditorium for events. Uh, we have a music room with a piano, uh, gymnasium, and um, uh, event space, which is in the cafeteria, um, which is actually closed in August. So you won't be able to order any food there, but uh, you'll be well taken care of by your host family. Um, so yes, I think um, that's the gist for the classroom experience. 
Um, but of course, there are many other elements uh, that we provide. So we have different workshops, sociocultural activities, and of course, the experience with the host family. So I'll get into those next. Um, this is a photo of our group from last year um, who participated in a bake uh, a bread baking workshop. Um, so a workshop is an opportunity to learn about the language in a different way. So you're using the language to learn a sort of skill or whatnot. So these this group was learning to bake bread, obviously in French. So all the instructions are French and all of the vocabulary they learn related to baking and whatnot. Um, and then, of course, just the informal conversation that happens when you have an activity like that. So um, it's another opportunity for, for you to practice your French in a different setting than sitting in the classroom. Um, so uh, we also, aside from the workshops, have sociocultural activities. So you get a sense of the culture of Quebec. Um, which is very well linked to the language, of course. In this photo, we have um, a group from last year, uh, our, our credit program, and they are participating in the Soirée Traditionnelle, which is where they listen to a Quebecois group, which you see in the top right corner there. Um, and there is a colleuse, which we call her, and she leads the group in dance. Um, so step here, step there. Everything's in French, of course. So it's, again, another opportunity to really practice that skill um, in a different setting than a classroom while learning about the culture of the area where you are um, living. Um, so it's a really fun one. Aside from that, um, typically we offer either a, a concert or plays, um, different excuse me, musical events. Music is a great way to learn a language, so we try to incorporate it as much as we can. Uh, sometimes we offer a whale watching trip in Rivière du Loup or um, visits to Parc de Bic or Ilo Basque, which are some local um, natural, really beautiful natural um, spots to discover. Um, so all of that will be presented to you. Typically, we have an activities calendar that we send um, a week or so before the program, so you get an idea of, of what is um, running um, for your session. And then, of course, our pillar, our, our really important aspect of the experience is staying with the host family. Um, in this picture, we have uh, some of our adult participants. I think they're sitting down for lunch based on what I see on the plates and the lighting in the room. <laughs> but um, so this lunch would have been prepared by their hosts here uh, at the back of the photo there. And then um, so so these students would have the opportunity to, you know, sit down with the family and with each other, share a conversation over meals. So you're learning about the culture of the like food in the home and, and how uh, just the, the culture of the home in, in general um, and and learning about your fellow participants as well and, and having the chance to interact. So um, typically you're placed with a family um, uh, for uh, room and board. Um, so you'll have, uh, you know, lodging and then three meals a day are, are provided by the family. So they buy the groceries, they cook the meals, which is a nice um, treat for a week or two. Um, and then, um, and then of course you, you have some other program participants in the home, depending on the size of the home, how many rooms, how many bathrooms, things like that. So when you register with us, you'll have the opportunity to provide us any information that will help us place you with a family. Um, typically, we look at um, a few different variables, but especially if you have allergies or dietary restrictions, um, you can let us know that when you register, and that way we can make sure to find a family that can accommodate. Um, in terms of families, we have, uh, you know, can mean, can mean a single person, can mean a retired married couple, can mean a young family with children, a young family without children. So, um, you know, when you register, you will have the opportunity to let us know if you have a preference one way or the other. Um, if you've participated with us before and there's a family that you know and you want to stay with, you can indicate that as well. Or if you have a friend or family member who will also be participating, um, you can indicate their name as well, and, and we'll try to place you together. Um, but the homestay piece is just, it's really, I think it's the element that 
can make people nervous, but by the end of the program is the one that really made the biggest difference for them. And so it's a really important aspect and a pillar of our program is, is having students stay with families. Um, we've had some families host for generations, so it's a big part of the community and um, it's, a, it's an important uh, element of the program for us. So um, the last uh, kind of visual we'll do is we have a little video, a YouTube video um, that just kind of explains the, the whole program. Uh, it features our previous director, Carolyn Young. She participated in the program herself. And so she's giving her view on, on her experience and, and, and what it's like to spend a week or two in Topi Stel. So here we go. So Western Continuing Studies provides a French immersion experience in Trois-Pistel, Quebec. You spend an entire week living and learning the language and culture. When you get up in the morning at your family's home, you have breakfast with the host, and then you head off to the classroom and you go into a classroom just like you returned back to high school. You spend uh, the morning from nine to 12 doing a, a range of activity. You're speaking, the um, instructors make it active learning. And then in the afternoon, you go film watching, you might spend an afternoon doing phonetics, there is another excursion that you take around the region to see, you know, the St. Lawrence and all the beautiful sites. And then you go back in the afternoon to your home state family and you have dinner with usually five to six other students. Um, there are all different levels in terms of fluency. And then the evening is usually a social activity somewhere in the community. So I think what's really important is you get comfortable with being uncomfortable. You don't know the language. You're staying with a family you've never met before. And so you have to force yourself to go into this situation where you're not comfortable. Then when it's over, the week is done, and you go back and you tell people about it, the sense of accomplishment is so great for your confidence. And what I found was important to me was the self-sufficiency that I can go back into a French speaking community and I can make my way and I'm not depending on a dictionary or a broken English to get where I want to go. Cool. Okay. So that gives a good sense of, of what the experience is like for, for students. Um, going to Twapi Stall. So we'll just wrap up with giving some information about, you know, dates, when we're offering programs, when registration will close. So um, at the moment, we have two programs still open for registration for 2023. The first is our one week program in August. So it's August 7th to 12th. Um, students would arrive on the Sunday leading up and then stay until the final Saturday. There's a class on the Saturday. So typically students would leave on the following Sunday, August 13th. Um, or in the afternoon or evening of the 12th, uh, 12th, yes, sorry. This program is open for registration until Friday, July 7th. So there's still some time if you are interested in that program to register um, and, and reserve your spot. Um, we also have a two week program, which uh, also starts August 7th. So everyone starts together. Uh, and then um, the two week program participants, of course, stay an extra week. Um, so everyone arrives on the same day, but the two groups leave at, at different times, of course. Uh, and this program is also open for registration until um, July 7th. So the registration can be done on our website if you are interested. Um, I'll just do also a quick overview of what we typically offer if you're not looking for this year, if you're looking for an experience in 2024. Um, typically, we offer a program in the spring, um, which is our university credit program, which can be anywhere between three, uh, three weeks or five weeks. And then in the summer, we offer a few more. So again, the university credit program, our adult long credit programming in typically June and August. 
and then our French teachers program in July. Um, we also have an online a certificate in French essentials, which is offered in the off season of Tropistal, so fall and winter. Um, so all of those details are on our website if you're interested in those programs. We will be updating the dates and costs and everything for 2024 uh, in October, so this coming fall. Um, so if you are interested for next year, you can take a look at that time to see um, what the details are for 2024. And the last thing, um, we'll just have our contact information in case you want to make note. Of course, our website, frenchimmersion.uwo.ca. We have a phone number here in London at our uh, office on campus at Western, uh, email as well. And then our location at Western is in UCC 47. So year round, we have an office here in London. And then there's the office uh, in Tropistal, which is open May to August. So here we do the year round kind of recruitment and communication piece. Um, so we are always reachable, even if our programs aren't necessarily running. Um, and I'll also mention we have a Facebook page, um, which you can always like or follow along and see, you know, what we get up to. And um, we have lots of community members who follow the page, as well as alumni or prospective students and staff. So um, it's a nice mix of people. And um, so it, it gives you a good sense of, of what we are up to on a, a weekly or monthly basis. Um, so... That is the end of the uh, session. I see we have one student who joined somewhere in the middle. Um, so we have recorded the session. Um, I will probably stop recording now. And then if anyone has any questions, um, feel free to type them in the chat or um, just open your mic and, and ask them 